Diana, thank you for hosting us here today. Um, I'll tell you that most of the people who work in my offices in El Paso and in Washington, D.C. are UTEP graduates. And so at a very personal level, I can see the transformative effect that UTEP has had on their lives individually, what they contribute to our office and what we're trying to do for this community uh, from a basis of public service. Uh, and I also see how transformative UTEP has been as an institution to this community and the region at large. And you mentioned the number of UTEP students who begin each day in Ciudad Juarez, come through our international ports, attend this great university, and further enrich not just El Paso and Juarez, but this country uh, and the country of Mexico as well. So I want to thank you for your leadership, and it's a big reason why when you look at metrics like public service, uh, research that's done at this institution and social mobility, UTEP ranks number seven in the country for total value uh, just behind Stanford and just ahead of Harvard. And so you make us proud and we thank you for what you do for this community. I also want to, to highlight uh, another hero that we have here in, in Bob Moore. Uh, Bob, as you all know, is the editor of the El Paso Times. In 2013, was the National Press Foundation's Editor of the Year, which I think was an acknowledgment of his effort and those who worked with him to uncover public corruption in El Paso and to help stamp it out and defeat it, uh, to focus his community's attention on education and our need to improve it, looking at some really difficult and challenging areas like water, uh, cross-border management of limited assets, uh, our military, and what we're here to talk about today, the U.S.-Mexico relationship. So Bob, thank you for being our MC and leading the conversations that we're having today. I, I also want to thank very quickly, I, I saw so many people out in the lobby, too many to mention, uh, including elected officials, uh, leaders from this community and other communities, folks from uh, Chihuahua, from uh, Tijuana, from San Diego, from Mexico City, from Washington, D.C. I, I want to especially thank everyone who's traveled to El Paso and tomorrow to Juarez uh, to take part in this important event and this conversation. It means a lot to this community. Uh, and I think beyond what we'll learn from listening to the great experts who will be on these panels, I think just these informal moments where we're talking to each other uh, and learning from each other's experiences uh, are going to be profoundly important in moving our agenda forward. Last night, uh, I had the pleasure of joining uh, former State Senator uh, Elliot Shapley and former California State Senator uh, Denise Duchaney, who's now a member of the Border Environmental Cooperation Commission. And just connecting what's going on in San Diego and in California with El Paso and Texas was incredibly helpful to me. And I know that's going to happen a hundred times over, over the length of these two days. So I want to thank everyone who's traveled here. And I'll note that we have mayors from El Paso, Juarez, Las Cruces, Laredo, Nogales, Socorro, Horizon, Vinton, uh, and Sunland Park, New Mexico. And those are the ones that registered ahead of time. We may have some others. So really want to thank everyone who's made an effort to, to be here. I also want to thank the uh, Desarrollo Económico in Ciudad Juarez for helping to produce uh, this event, for the Borderplex, Rolando Pablos, and the Chairman Woody Hunt for making this possible, and for the amazing staff at UTEP. Uh, this, this is a huge logistical and organizational challenge, and I want to thank them. I also want to take a moment to thank my staff, and among them, most importantly, Mario Porras. Um, this is, uh, just so you understand uh, the impact that a conference like this has on someone who's organizing it, this is a picture of Mario Porras one month ago. <laughs> if, you, if you'll move to the next slide, this, this is what he looks like. This is what he looks like today. Um, so you can see the toll it, it took on Mario. So, so Mario, thank you for, for all of your work. Um, I, I'll tell you, th this is an important summit. We're bringing together leaders from the United States and Mexico, from civil society, from business leadership, cabinet secretaries uh, from, from both sides. Uh, but it is not the first summit that we've had in this community. In fact, the first time that a U.S. president and a Mexican president ever met was here in El Paso, Texas in 1909. 
they then, uh, a little bit later in the day, went over to the Customs House in Ciudad Juarez, uh, Porfirio Diaz and uh, William H. Taft, and discussed issues of importance to the United States and Mexico, laid the foundations for important agreements that were later consummated, like the Chamizal Treaty, and they did it all without translators because both presidents were perfectly bilingual. They understood and they lived the importance of this dynamic binational relationship. I like to think that much of the success that the region enjoyed following that meeting of the two presidents and El Paso's arrival on the national stage as a leading American city. And the benefits economically, culturally, uh, from a standpoint of immigration and otherwise that accrued to the two countries were a result of that spirit of 1909 when this was the natural capital of these two countries, where El Paso Juarez defined the relationship going forward. And I'd like to think that we're coming back to that with this event today, uh, with the events that we'll have tomorrow, including the part in Ciudad Juarez in Mexico, and most importantly for the runners uh, in the room today, the first binational 10K road race between the two countries since 9-11. Really a symbol that the, that the border is moving to a more healthy, normal state where we're celebrating the successes capitalizing on the opportunities and rejecting a lot of the fear and the anxiety that's produced not here in El Paso and Juarez, but in Washington, D.C. and by the talking heads on cable television. So thank you for taking part in this conference and this summit, for helping to make it a success, and I look forward to joining you and listening to the great speakers who will follow, learning something and putting it to use to make the El Paso Juarez region stronger and to make the U.S.-Mexico relationship stronger. Thank you all very much. Thank you, uh, President Natalicio and uh, uh, Representative O'Rourke for uh, getting us started. Uh, I'd like to invite our first panel to uh, uh, come up on the stage. And while they're getting seated, I'd like to uh, uh, introduce uh, uh, one special guest that, that uh, uh, is here. Uh, he's going to be a, uh, a panelist tomorrow, but uh, University of Texas Regent uh, Paul Foster uh, is with us today. You have uh, uh, more complete bios of uh, the speakers today in, in the packet that you got uh, uh, during registration, so I'll just give a very brief introduction to um, uh, uh, the people up on the, the, the panel today. For, for our first conversation, uh, uh, we're honored today to have uh, Senator Gabriela Cuevas Barón, uh, who is the uh, uh, chair of Mexico's Senate Committee on Foreign Relations. Um, uh, William Duncan, who is the Chargé d'Affaires of uh, the U.S. Embassy in Mexico for the United States. Uh, uh, Alejandra de la Vega, who is the Chief Executive Officer of Almacenas Dist Distribuidores de la Frontera. And uh, Woody Hunt, who is the Executive Chairman of Hunt Companies here in El Paso. And moderating this first panel, we're uh, 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 pleased to have with us uh, Patrick Schaefer, who is the uh, Executive Director of the Hunt Institute for Global Competitiveness. And I will turn it over to Patrick. Oh, with one last reminder, as the conversation goes along, if you have a question, uh, uh, please feel free to share it on Twitter with the uh, uh, hashtag US. MXS, and uh, hopefully in the last 10 minutes or so of the discussion, we'll be able to get to some audience questions. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moore, and um, thank you for everybody uh, being with here, uh, here with us today. I had uh, actually prepared quite detailed and thorough uh, biographical um, introductions for our panel, so um, the uh, MC has saved that uh, trouble to allow us to go right to the uh, heart of the matter in the conversation. Uh, today's uh, first panel is um, entitled, What's Next for North America? Uh, the view from Washington, D.C., Mexico City, um, El Paso, Texas, and Ciudad Juarez. And the idea is to really talk about uh, what kind of uh, things are happening at the federal level in both Washington, D.C. and Mexico City, as well as the things that are happening locally uh, that really affect our binational relationship. 
And um, the countries here in North America in general, but particularly Mexico and the United States, are growing uh, increasingly more intertwined and interdependent. Uh, we see this in uh, terms of uh, familial relations, cultural relations, uh, economic relations, natural resource and energy issues. So um, we've also seen in the last uh, several decades uh, uh, frameworks in the economic sector such as NAFTA and the H-LED, which are even uh, further pushing us uh, closer together. Uh, so the question is, um, how can we, um, in Mexico City, in Washington, D.C., as well as in El Paso and in Ciudad Juarez, really uh, work to facilitate and optimize this binational relationship? What kind of challenges uh, do we face in Washington, D.C., and in Mexico City, and what kind of challenges do we face here in El Paso and Ciudad Juarez that we can really work to overcome to make our two countries work uh, in the best possible fashion? Um, maybe we could start with uh, Mr. Duncan. I think you're, yeah, it should be. My own? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. And I want to thank Dr. Natalicio, and I want to thank Representative O'Rourke for, for this wonderful forum. Um, I have, uh, you know, I started my career on the Mexican border uh, about 25 years ago. Uh, I, as fate would have it, I seem to come back to Mexico about every 10 years. Uh, and I've often thought that the border may be <clears throat> the least understood, most important thing in the lives of these two countries. So I think this is a wonderful opportunity. Uh, I think we're in a very exciting time. Uh, I think a lot of, uh, and I bring that perspective of 25 years of intermittent association with, with Mexico uh, to that. I think we're in a very exciting time because uh, of some of the mechanisms that you mentioned, the H-LED, for example, which engages uh, really the whole economic cabinets of both countries, uh, involves the leadership of the Vice President, involves the leadership of Secretary Pritzker, who will be with us tomorrow, I believe, to take on a whole host of economic issues, everything from uh, education and innovation, Dr. Natalicio mentioned Fobesi in her introduction, Mosaic, uh, takes on bridges and border crossings thanks to HLED. This year, we expect to be cutting ribbons on three important infrastructure projects, West Rail in Brownsville, Guadalupe Tornillo right here, uh, and then the Tijuana Airport project uh, out west. Uh, and so what that mechanism really does at, at rock bottom, I think, is cut through a lot of bureaucratic red tape for both governments uh, to prioritize, uh, in many cases, things that are extremely important to this border region. Uh, and I don't have to tell anybody in this room what this border region means to both countries. Uh, you've all heard the, the, uh, uh, the statistic before. If, if it were a country, it'd be, the, I think, the fourth largest economy in the world. Uh, so it's an incredibly important place for both of our countries. 